Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have beach tiered tray DIYs for you using items from the Dollar Tree. Now for the first tiered tray, tray number one, we're actually going to make the tiered tray. I'm going to make it look like a beach chair and I absolutely love how this one turned out. I'm also going to show you how I decorated it. So let's get crafting. So what we're going to do is start with two square signs. I have these two square signs from the Dollar Tree. Um, you kind of want them to have a frame or a lip on them if you can or a thicker sign because you kind of want them to have like a little bit of a bottom. Now, unfortunately, these sides are really hard to come off these particular signs from the Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to have to do is end up just using them upside down like that because I need the ledges to be on the bottom. And unfortunately, these staples... I mean, they don't want to come out. And if you lift it from the other side, it kind of breaks the surface of that sign too. So you know what? We're just going to kind of nail them in and hope that we can paint over them and kind of, you know, cover that up. But this is the color that we're going to use for our tear tray. It is Cloudless by Apple Barrel from Walmart. And I want to paint the bottom of these going over all the staples. We're also going to paint all of the frames on the sides because that's going to be the edges. And what I want this tear tray to look like is one of those like giant um, beach Adirondack chairs that you see. We have them here in Vero. A lot of the beaches that I've been to here in Florida lately have these, the big giant Adirondack chairs. Or I guess it could just be any Adirondack chair. I wanted it to look like a beach chair and actually be a tear tray. Now I'm going to do a two tier tray. That's why I need two of the signs, but I think that you could do this with like three if you wanted to. And my original plan, I thought I was going to be able to do three. Might be a little tall, but it might be really cute. So as you can see that like MDF on the back of that sign just really soaks in acrylic paint. So it is going to take several coats to get good coverage on this, but I want to cover up you know, as much of that MDF and the staples as I can, hopefully burying some of those staples in it, also touching up all the sides. So one of these is going to be like the seat of the Adirondack chair, and then the other one is going to be like a shelf below it. And then we are going to build the whole thing out with Dollar Tree rulers. It's a great time to get their wood rulers from the Dollar Tree. And I think I calculated, I used a total of 17 of them. So you're going to need nine packages of the rulers to recreate because you get two in a package. And it's a great time to get them right now because they have them in the school supply aisle, but they also have them in, you know, their seasonal school supply stuff. So... This is what they look like. They have these little stickers on them. No big deal. You just peel those off. It does leave like a little ridge in the middle. We're going to try to avoid those if we can um, using the ridge side down. They also have holes in them, which I'm going to kind of work around those too. Um, if they really bother, you could always spackle those and fill those in. But I'm just going to go ahead and just start opening all these rulers peeling all the stickers off super easy i'm kind of calculating at this point how many i'm going to need i know i need four for the four legs of the chair and then i was thinking how can i build the sides of the chair so i'm going to have like side structure i'm going to have like the armrests and then i'm going to do a total of five slats along the back um, for the Adirondack chair. And so that's why I just kept adding more rulers. And I'm pretty sure it was a total of 17 rulers that I used for this DIY. Now, if you wanted to make this on a smaller scale, you co totally could with like jumbo popsicle sticks or something like that. But you're gonna get a smaller tear tray. It's gonna be harder to decorate probably because it's gonna be smaller. So, you know, take that into account. 
And these rulers are a great source of wood. They're super strong. And I think this is going to turn out. So I counted them there, total of 17. And I thought we probably should go ahead and paint them now before we get started building this tier tray, because I think it's going to be easier to paint them now. So these are wood, unlike the MDF on the back of those signs. So they're going to paint a lot better with acrylic paint, but I just lined them all up and we're going to paint them all at once with this cloudless color. This is like my favorite beachy blue color from Walmart and it's the apple barrel paint. So it's super inexpensive. Sometimes I mix some colors to get to this color, but I really like the shade of blue. Now I'm going to try to take all of the steps of the creation of this tear tray. Um, try to take them slow so that you can recreate this on your own because I came up with this um, plan all on my own and I don't really, you know, have a blog or anything like that with steps in it. So I want to make sure that you get every step. Now what I'm doing here is just painting the sides of the rulers because you're going to be able to see them and trying to kind of set up an assembly line of painting here. I think I spent half the time on this project um, painting, so be prepared. I guess you could always, you know, um, stain the wood if you wanted that kind of look, or you could leave it natural wood and it would save you a lot of time for real. You would have to find the seats and stuff like that in a nicer looking wood than the back of the sign like I used. But that looks good. So I'm flipping all the rulers over and we have to paint all the back of these too because you're going to be able to see them. Now, my original plan, I wanted to use the five gallon paint stirrer sticks from Walmart. And unfortunately, they come in three packs. And I have one three pack at my house and I was ready to build this DIY. And I was like, oh no, I have four legs. But if you use the five gallon sticks from Dollar Tree, you could make it taller and you could get that third tier in if you want a three tier tray. But even though this is wood and it doesn't soak it up, I am going over all the rulers with like two coats of paint just to make sure they're good and beachy blue. So I think that looks good. We can set these aside to start drying and then we can start putting this tear tray together. I've made some really creative tear trays in the past, like my lobster trap tear tray, but I think this one is my favorite. It turned out so cute. So what we're gonna start with is our two blue signs now and four of the blue rulers. Now, I don't really want that hole to be in there, but I want the entire height. So I'm gonna make the holes go to the top of the tear tray because I'm gonna brace that out and hopefully be able to hide the holes in them a little bit. I do want them to have feet though too, but not much because again, I want the height. So I was trying to find something to space it out with. I ended up just using one of those little wood blocks from the Dollar Tree as a spacer and my staple gun and I stapled my first leg onto the corner. The legs are going to be on the sides of this chair table, chair tra tra chair table, I'm like chair table. <laughs> and I'm going to use that wood block for a spacer to staple on the back one. Now with the rest of the construction, I really um, tried hard to use hot glue and staples, make it a little bit stronger, but I just used staples on this one to get started. It just seemed easier. If you don't have a staple gun, you could always use like some small nails as well. They sell those at the Dollar Tree and um, I think you would have good luck with that too. These staples were um, just about the right length for most of this project. So I'm going to use my staple gun a lot. So again, using my spacer, we're going to put the fourth and final side on. Just lining it all the way up against the front or the back, I guess. And this is what you have so far. So it's like the bottom kind of of a bookcase almost. And now it's time to put our second tier in. I was trying to decide how big I want the tiers to be. The top part there is going to be like armrest height, so it doesn't need to be as tall. And I think what I ended up doing was about seven inches between the shelves is what I decided on. And, you know, a, a ruler is 12 inches. We had a little bit for the foot there. And so that kind of shows you where I put it. I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue to glue this little shelf right in place on that bottom board. 
And then I'm going to measure the other side seven inches to make sure I get this level and hot glue that one too. The hot glue is kind of a temporary thing to hold that into place until we can get some staples in there because that's going to reinforce it. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. The only thing I didn't paint was the bottom of the tears. You could do that. It would look pretty good too if you did that. And I measure seven inches again. We're going to tack that side down with some hot glue. And finish up with a fourth and final side. Once I get them all like kind of tacked with hot glue, um, then I can start stapling them. I just wanted to make sure that I got like this tier level first. So I'm just going to go ahead and staple right through. I found that this staple and the hot glue kind of made it extra strong. Kind of wish I would have done that on the bottom. But again, it does feel pretty strong with just the staples. The rulers are nice and thin. So the staple goes right through them into the wood below. So we got all four sides all attached. Our legs, we have both of our tiers. Now, I didn't really think you'd be able to see the holes in the back of the top one because I'm going to have the back of the chair there, but you would be able to see the ones in the bottom. So even though I didn't do it before, I'm just using some Dollar Tree spackle just to fill in those holes so you can't see them in the final project. And I'm glad I did. It just made it look cleaner. So easy peasy. I just filled the four holes and then we're just going to have to touch up the paint a little bit to cover that up. And we can keep building this little beach Adirondack chair tear tray. I love it. It's so much fun. Okay, so we need to build the structure for the armrest. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a ruler from side to side. So I'm going to measure from side to side, and then I'm going to take two rulers, one for each armrest, brace, and cut those down to size. Then I'm going to use hot glue here, and this is covering up that hole on the top of the ruler that I was concerned about. And I'm gluing like the tab side down to keep like the flat edges on the outside like that. Now, I wasn't sure if I should staple into this because I don't really have anything besides the two rulers, but it actually worked stapling into it. And I thought it would provide a little bit more stru st structure. We're going to have lots of staples. I am going to paint over those um, to kind of hide those later. And, you know, we've already had the staples from before that we needed to hide. So I think it's going to work. So I cut down two, one for each side. So we're going to go ahead and hot glue that in place right up against the top, side to side. And then I am going to use my staple gun to staple those into place as well. Just be careful on this one that you don't put your finger underneath of it. If you're using your staple gun, you don't want a staple going through your finger. So those are the two side panels. Now I kind of need a panel in the same exact place for the back of my chair. So I'm going to take another ruler that we painted blue, measure from end to end, and I'm going to cut this one down as well. Don't have a lot to glue to here besides the other two rulers, but I just hot glue onto both sides. And I didn't really have anything to staple to at that point, so I couldn't really staple that one in, even though I kind of wish that I would have. So this is what we have so far. It's kind of like a little bookcase, if you will, with like a shorter like top. Now for the armrest, I'm going to take another ruler and I'm going to have it go just straight to the flush with the front and I'm going to measure to that back brace. And again, I'm going to take two of those rulers to my saw, cut those down one armrest for each side. Then I'm going to put hot glue on the two rulers, the front and the back. And we're going to hot glue the little armrest in place. Nothing's really going to sit on this, so it doesn't have to be super strong. But what I did is I pushed the little ridge up against the ruler. So it's like that. There's a slight gap over the side, which overhangs. And it overhangs towards the middle of the chair where somebody would sit um, more. So we're going to do the same thing here on this side. Going to hot glue this in place, putting the tab on that ruler flush up against the other set of rulers. And this one, when I cut it kind of um, chipped a little bit, but I'm gonna hide that because it's gonna be um, on the back of the chair. You won't be able to see it back there. 
Now for the back, it needs a little bit more structure than the one ruler. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut down another piece to go flat as well. And it's gonna give something for like the slats of the Adirondack chair to lean back against. So I'm just gonna cut a ruler that will go from one of those armrests to the other, kind of fitting on the inside, not overlapping, because I don't want you to be able to see that on the sides. And I'm just gonna attach that with hot glue, kind of pushing the ledge up against it as well. And again, I only had ruler to ruler to glue to here. So I'm gonna try my best to make that as strong as possible. So I was thinking of something I could put in the gap and I was thinking like a one of these little dowels from the Dollar Tree would be great. So I put some hot glue there and then glued a dowel into place there to give something else for that to lean up against because otherwise I didn't think it was gonna be very sturdy. I also am gonna use some hot glue on the corners to try to reinforce them as well because I wasn't able to use any staples there. Then I thought, you know, if I use some masking tape, um, I can make it a little bit stronger. So what I did is I took masking tape and I ripped the top, the bottom and the sides. So it kind of has like a feathered ends. That way I can use the masking tape here. I can paint over that and it's gonna kind of blend in with the wood. And you really have no idea it's there, but I think it's gonna provide a little bit of extra stability than just the hot glue alone. So I'm gonna do the same thing here on this side and feathering the edges, like ripping the top, bottom and the sides of that is kind of the key to get that to blend in. It's kind of like that wallpaper that you used to rip. I remember doing that in my master bedroom. We used to live in Philadelphia. <laughs> and I think that is gonna make that a lot stronger, but I don't want any of this stuff to be seen. So gonna touch it up again with some of that cloudless paint, painting our dowel, the end of the ruler and over all of the masking tape. And whenever you're building with Dollar Tree materials like this, whenever I do wood projects, I use masking tape a lot. I find that it does provide a lot of structure and you can get it to virtually disappear kind of like this. And again, nothing's really gonna be sitting up on that part of the chair in the final project. So I think it's gonna be okay. I didn't really have too many um, edges to um, paint, but then I just went over and painted all of my staples that I just added to the chair, that blue color too. Now it's time to form the back part of the Adirondack chair. So what I wanted to do was do like five slats going straight up like that, well slanted back like that. So just trying those on for size, trying to figure out exactly how I'm gonna do that. I don't want them to have holes in them. I think that will take away from the design. So I'm gonna take five of them to my saw and basically I'm just cutting the holes off. So they're gonna be like, what, 11 inches maybe? And that's gonna form the five um, back of the chair. And then the other two, if you're wondering, are for the braces for the back of that. So um, I'm just gonna mark how big this back part of the Adirondack chair can be. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut our two brace pieces down to that size. So I'll know exactly how big to make the back of it. That's why we needed 17 rulers. <laughs> but in the end, I mean, I think this is really inexpensive to put together considering how a high end it looks at the end. So there is our five rulers with the holes cut off. And then we have our two braces. I'm gonna have the notches go towards the back of the chair so you won't be able to see them. And I'm trying to just space those out as evenly as I can just by sight. And then I am going to hot glue this ruler onto the back by doing five dots of hot glue and put it down probably about three inches. And then here is the other brace. We're gonna do the same thing. Five dots of hot glue, flip that over. Now, if you wanna get fancy and curve the cut on the top of that, you could, but I, I'm not that great with the saw. I thought about stapling them, 
Um, because before I was able to staple through two of them, but I noticed it started to come through a little bit. So I think hot glue is going to be plenty to keep that strong. Now it's a matter of putting this together. So it's going to kind of slide in like this. I want it to lean back to make it look like, you know, the classic Adirondack, like beach chair. Isn't the color of it lovely? I really love how this turned out. I'm so glad I decided to make it blue. So I need to attach that to that brace that we put in the back. I'm just trying to figure out exactly kind of how far back I want it to tilt and how I can attach that. So what I'm going to do is flip this over. The dowel worked really good before. So I'm going to use a dowel again um, for a little bit of structure for back here. So I'm going to hot glue that brace to this top ruler by using a wooden dowel to kind of glue it all together. Tilting it back like that. Now I wanna make sure it stays in place. So I'm also gonna take hot glue on the back of the bottom of each one of these rulers and glue those little panels of the chair to the shelf. It was kind of hard to get in there. I'm kind of spreading out the hot glue a little bit. And then of course we don't wanna see that. So I'm just gonna go in and touch that dowel up with some blue paint as well to make it kind of all blend in. Again, all that's gonna be on the back, but of course I still want it to look nice. I do a second row of hot glue on the bottom of these rulers to make sure they stay put. And that will all be hidden as well. And wouldn't you look at it, we have a little beach Adirondack chair tear tray. I had this vision in my mind all day and I couldn't wait to build it. That's why I couldn't even go to Walmart. I was like, no, 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 no. I know I have Dollar Tree rulers because I stock up on them this time of year. And I absolutely love how this little beach chair tear tray turned out. Isn't this cute? Think of how many things you could do. Like for Christmas, you could put Santa in there for Easter you could have like Easter bunny sit in there or you can just load it down with beach decor. Isn't it cute? I love it. My son loves it. My husband's like, you made a baby chair. <laughs> and I got very offended. I said, it's not a baby chair, but I'm glad I don't have any toddlers around because they might want to sit in it if they saw it. Because <laughs> it's actually pretty big. So let's decorate it. It's a tear tray, right? I kind of wanted to go with a white theme, so I decided to see what I had from the Dollar Tree that was white. I have one of these little hanging starfish from the Dollar Tree that I thought we could hang on the back of it. The hanger was going to be a little big though, so what I did was I just knotted that up, and then we can just slide that on the back of the Adirondack chair to kind of decorate the back. I thought that would be fun since it already has a little hanger. Um, this is the white one. You can always do whatever colors you want, but I thought like white decor would look really cute against that light blue beach chair. So everything is going to be kind of white, kind of went with the shiny theme, which I usually don't do, but I'm just going to slide that kind of on one side like that, kind of like decorating the back of our tear tray. Now, the next item is from Shore Living. This was their little ceramic tray. It's kind of like um, an unfinished ceramic and it's a kind of beat up a little bit. So um, we're gonna go ahead and paint it first. I'm just gonna use some white acrylic and we're just gonna paint the front of this. A lot of the items that I have from the Dollar Tree um, that I'm gonna use to decorate this are white and like really glossy. So I'm gonna make this shiny too. Now, you know, acrylic paint dries just kind of like a matte finish. So I'm gonna have to seal this after I paint it white, but um, I guess it wasn't really that white in the first place because when I used just white acrylic paint on that, that really brightened it up, didn't it? And this is just a little dish. They also had this in a starfish one, which would be really cute. I had a really old bottle of lacquer because <laughs> all of my sealers are like a matte finish because I never do glossy. So I found this and We'll see if it works. It did work. I noticed it did kind of want to take a little bit some of my paint off. So I did have to touch it up just a little bit. And then um, just put another coat on. It actually dried really fast and it gave it like super shiny finish. Look how cute that is. 
You could also use the little um, shell bikini tops from the summer section at the Dollar Tree. It's about the same size, but I think this one's a little bit prettier if you have one of these left over from Shore Living. I think it looks great, all painted white and shiny. And we can go ahead and add that to our cute little tear tray. I'm gonna kind of lean that up against the back of our chair here. And then this is one of the white shiny things I was talking about. It's a little mermaid tail from Dollar Tree. Um, my Dollar Trees have had these for a while. I don't think they're like a new thing. They can be kind of hard to find. Um, I have them in different colors too, like pinks and blues. This is the white one. So it's perfect for what I'm looking for on this tear tray decoration. I really wanted white and I really wanted like ropes and basically that's kind of it. So I was trying to really stick with white and I had one of these like little white um, urchins, sea urchins. Um, decor that I had um, that I wasn't using anywhere. So I grabbed it. I thought that would be a nice little touch on um, the tear tray. So I'm going to kind of put that one right over here. It's not shiny and I don't want to paint it because I don't want to mess it up because I use lots of things like that with my coastal decor um, just laying around. Now this is from the Shore Living line as well. It's the little blue candle dish. Um, with the twine wrapped around it, it has a little starfish, super easy candle DIY. So I'm just going to use some Dollar Tree white sand and pour that in there. And then just use a little real white votive candle from the Dollar Tree. And I think this is going to be really cute on the front of the tear tray. I love these. I pick these up every year with Shore Living. I think they've had these all three years and I always try to grab them. And I think that is going to finish off the top tier right here in front. And then we can start decorating the bottom tier. This is also from the Shore Living. It is also like that unfinished like ceramic. It's like a mermaid um, scales or fish scales. I thought since it was already white, I could just put the lacquer on there. But look what happens to it when you put the lacquer on there. It turned brown. I was kind of surprised, but I'm like, okay, fine. I'll paint it white first. And I didn't really want to get in all those grooves. And I did have a little bit of white primer spray paint. So I'm going to go outside with this and give it a quick spray. And hopefully we can make this all glossy like we made um, the little um, shell DIY. So once I got that dry, I sprayed it down with some more of the lacquer and made it super shiny. I did notice, you know, it does kind of want to take the paint off a little bit. I don't know if that's something with the lacquer, but I think that looks pretty good. And I think this is going to be a really fun decoration for the tear tray as well. I'm glad I kind of went with a shiny thing for most of the things on here. It really made them look coordinated. So here's the bottom tier of our tear tray. I'm going to kind of use that little scale ball right back there in the back. And then I thought one of these like jute twine wrapped like orbs. I don't know what these are called. <laughs> They're from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree too. Would be really cute back there too. It's about the same size. Um, I really love buying this for $1.25 because I think it would be not that easy to make. It would be time consuming to wrap it with the twine and you would have to get all your circles to lay just right. But I think that looks really great with the theme we're going with. And then I have a little white relax sign that I thought would be great on there as well. This is just from the home decor section at Dollar Tree. It's white with some gray letters that say the gray ones are E and A. And I kind of want them to look like wood to kind of go with that rope feel, not necessarily white. So I just took like a, you know, kind of a tan paint and a chunky brush from Dollar Tree and just working in one direction, distressing those and finishing that up with a baby wipe. It's going to give it a very um, easy wood grain finish on those and just kind of break up the word a little bit. And I think that's going to look really cute down there on the tear tray. And this tear tray was so fun to decorate. I think this is going to look so great in my living room.
because you know I do coastal, I do beach year round. And I told you guys in the last video that I'll keep making beach videos if you guys keep watching them. Now, my last beach video did not do well. So I hope you guys watch this one, please. And thank you. Okay, so this is also from the Shore Living line. It is that Unfinished Ceramic 2. Um, and it has a candle, light up candle inside of it. So super fun little fish. I think these were new this year. I've never seen these before. Now I'm not using spray paint on this one because I didn't want to spray paint the candle inside. Um, so I'm just using white acrylic and a brush so I can get down in all the fish scales. And I just went over the whole thing because of course I wanna make this glossy too with the lacquer. Um, and I know that you can't do that on that unfinished ceramic, lesson learned. I was really surprised by how brown that turned out. That was crazy, right? So we got this painted white, I dried it, and now we're just gonna spray it with some of that super glossy lacquer. I have no idea how old this can is, but I'm kind of glad I used the rest of it up. <laughs> again, it kind of took some of the paint off, so I am having to touch it up again with some acrylic. And then another coat of the lacquer to make that part shiny as well. And we have a little white light up white fish for the tear tray. I think that's going to be really cute in the front and we can light that up as well. Isn't that cute? And I know they've brought back like the white ceramic trays this year in 2024. I'm not sure if they have the fish or not, but it was really cute. I know that they have like the um, ceramic orbs and stuff like that that we used. And some of the candle holders might be different, but I did want to show you how I styled this one. And let's go ahead and light that up for fun. Why not? And I think I really only have room for like one more item on this tear tray. So let's use one of the ceramic shore living starfish. This is so cute. This is the one from last year. I think they changed it slightly this year where it's like lifting one of its rays maybe. For some reason I'm thinking it's a little bit different this year. But here it is and I don't have to do anything to it. It's already glossy the look I was going for, and we're just gonna kinda hang that off the front here. So just a really fun tear tray. We made it from scratch with the little beach chair and all of the white and blue items that we added, seashells, starfish, mermaid tails. We have a candle, I went ahead and lit it to show you what that looks like. And I made this beach chair tear tray last summer and it has really held up well um, with the construction. I was kind of impressed because it's kind of been, um, you know, moved around in storage in my garage and stuff like that during the winter and stuff. And um, it is ready to go this year for the summertime. Hey guys, if you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. It always helps my videos do better here on YouTube. Okay, are you ready for tray number two? I'm going to show you how I decorate a three tier tray to give you lots of beachy ideas for how you can decorate your tier tray using items from the Dollar Tree. We're gonna start with the first one with one of these little sandcastle uh, buckets from the Dollar Tree. Doesn't matter which color you get, just get one that's kind of the style you like. I think this is like a traditional like sandcastle look. And the first thing we're gonna do is paint it. I'm using chalk paint, but you can kind of use whatever you have. I was just looking for a color that's gonna be similar to sand to cover up all of the bright yellow that's on my little sand castle. I had removed this strap for the bucket. It does leave the little plastic tabs on the side, but that's okay. It didn't really bother me, so I just left those on there. And I'm just using a brush so I can kind of get down in between all of the texture and the bricks and everything on there. It's actually quite detailed. And what we're gonna do is just make a really fun sandcastle for the top of my tear tray. This is gonna work great because it can just sit right on top and um, if there's a pole or anything like that, you can kind of just cover that up with your little sandcastle as well. 
Okay, next step, let's make it look authentic. I'm gonna use some Dollar Tree sand. The one I chose is the tan sand, but it will look really cute with the white sand as well. And I am just gonna use Mod Podge and we are gonna go over the sand castle and cover it with glue. You could also use school glue that works really well for sand as well. Sand is pretty lightweight, so it's pretty easy to glue onto things. Um, the purpose of the tan paint first is because any areas that won't be covered in sand will still kind of match and blend in without any bright yellow or fluorescent colors like peeking through. But I'm trying to get like a good coat all over um, with my foam brush and keep it nice and wet. And then we can start covering this in sand. This was a really fun, you know, I like to cover things with sand for DIYs all the time, but I think this was my first sand castle. It was so much fun to make. So I just start sprinkling all over. I put it on a Dollar Tree tray to kind of catch my sand that I could always reuse. And I'm just going to go one side at a time and just start getting as much sand adhered to our little sand castle as we can. And it's looking really cute already. Now the next step to make it stay on there, I like to use this spray adhesive. I get this at the Dollar Tree. It can be a little hard to find. And then I'll sprinkle a little bit more sand over that wet sand. And it's going to give me kind of a second layer of sand and any areas that kind of need it for a little bit better coverage. And this really does look like a sand castle in the end. It's super cute and fun. So we are going to spray it with a little bit more of that spray adhesive to make sure all of our sand stays put. And I give it a quick dry and look at our cute little sand castle. Perfect for a beach tear tray. And I'll show you towards um, the end of this section how I put that together. Now here is our next find from um, the toy aisle actually at Dollar Tree. These cute little Adirondack chairs. They are perfect, I think, for a beach tray, but you kind of can tell that they're plastic, a little bit toy-like, right? So I thought we could paint these. Um, they're already a color I really like, that teal blue, but I'm going to mix together like some Caribbean blue, some ivory, and get a really a nice a light blue cover color, and going in there with a chunky brush, kind of painting all over these, kind of getting it just exactly the right color I want. What that's going to do is it's really going to make it not look like plastic. It's going to make it look way more like wood. You're going to see all of the brush strokes in there. And um, you kind of have to go in and do the back and like arms and stuff as well. You're going to want it to be pretty uniform in color. And this was a really easy DIY. And they do have these again this year. I just picked up some of these the other day. They also have like the Adirondack chair where it like lays down. I think it might be purple. That would be really cute to use on a tear tray as well. Now that I have it kind of painted all over, we can decorate it. Look how cute it is. I love that light beachy blue color. And it just totally gives it a different feel, way less like a toy. And then I'm going to use some of the little fairy garden decorations. They have so many cute beach ones. They have so many this year that I've never seen before. But I thought like one of the little buckets of sand would be really cute to go with my little beach themed tear tray. And to decorate like the little table that's going in between both of the chairs. I'm just going to touch mine up a little bit. Sometimes these are painted a little bit sloppy, but sometimes they're pretty good. I'm just being extra and touching mine up a little bit. And then I'm going to secure it to the little table with a little dot of hot glue on the bottom so it stays in place. Now I was trying to think about what to decorate these with. I didn't have any little people, but I came up with a really fun plan to put into the chairs. How about some of the Dollar Tree Shore Living Starfish? We're gonna make two little starfish people. I'm just gonna leave them white. They fit perfectly in the ad little Adirondack chairs and it's gonna give you another coastal beachy touch. 
so that DIY is ready. The next item is also from Dollar Tree. It's just a little light blue ceramic whale. I think they have these a lot of the time. I've been able to find them there for a couple of years. Not sure if they're necessarily shore living or not, but I didn't really like like this super glossy porcelain. So we're going to go over ours with some matte Mod Podge to try to tone that down just to kind of make it go more with my coastal farmhouse vibe that we're going for on the tear tray. And see how that really took the sheen off there. I'm also going to go back in and distress mine a little bit just to make mine look a little bit more like wood, just with a little ivory, a chunky brush, doing some nice distressing marks all over. Now, when you wipe off any excess paint, be careful because you don't want to take off that matte Mod Podge, but I'm just kind of doing a light distress all over. And this little whale is gonna look so cute on our little beach tear tray. And here he is, ready to go. Okay, the next thing we're going to use is a Dollar Tree Shore Living bottle. A little bottle. This one says Sand of My Favorite Beach. They have lots of different ones. I like this one because I like that color of blue of the writing. And it's going to be so easy to do. All we're going to do is have to fill it up with some sand. It really can be sand from your favorite beach. Or if you like me, you have lots of Dollar Tree sand. And I had some leftover from making the sand castle. So we're going to use it. And we're just going to fill up the little bottle. And it has a little cork for the top. So easy and cute. And it's the perfect size, I think, for a tear tray. I just cut a hole in the bottom of the plastic bag I was storing mine in. That worked pretty well. Still made a little bit of a mess, but you could always use a funnel. And then we're going to fill up the top with little Dollar Tree seashells, the ones that come in the little glass bottles, to make a little faux beach. Easy peasy, that's ready to go on the tear tray. Now, this is another fairy garden item. It is a sand castle. Isn't it cute? They have um, a different version of this this year, too, um, that looks a little bit more like granular sand than this one. This one's kind of got that brick look. And I like it, but I'm just going to touch it up a little bit just to make sure that it is painted well and kind of goes with the vibe of the other thing. So just kind of going over it with that kind of sand colored paint that I had just to distress it here and there. And then I'm just going to touch up some of the areas that are painted, but it's mostly just all tan. And there was a little blue bucket on there, so I'm just going to touch that up too. And then it wasn't quite tall enough to sit in my tear tray that you could see it. So I'm just using a Dollar Tree um, round wood block that I had had painted gray from another tear tray. But I want mine to kind of look like sand, kind of matching with the sand castle vibe. So I'm going to go over mine with that like tan colored chalk paint just to kind of make it blend a little bit better. And we're just going to have a little riser for the tear tray to hold the little sandcastle up where everybody can see it. Just attaching it with a little bit of hot glue so it doesn't move all over the place. And then I thought I would take advantage of that because then I could add some more of those cute little beach fairy garden decorations to, um, you know, decorate it a little bit more. So they had like a little hermit crab that I thought would be cute. That's a little seahorse. They're so cute. I love decorating with these. And they're kind of small on their own for a tear tray. But when you add them to a project like this, um, they totally work. So I'm also going to use the little life ring, I think. But since I was going for the beach feel, I thought, you know, I might as well just go ahead and cover the base with sand too and just make it look extra special. So just cover that base with a little bit of Mod Podge and some more of that Dollar Tree tan sand. So it totally goes with the vibe. Gonna spray a little of that spray adhesive on top. I love to use that when I'm trying to secure sand to a project. And then give it a quick dry. And then we can attach the fairy garden beach decorations. I am going to glue them down so that they don't kind of fall all over the place and they stay down. 
whenever you're hot gluing to sand though, make sure that you're using a lot of hot glue and really getting down to the surface underneath of the sand. Otherwise, it's gonna just fall off. And this is how it turned out, our little sand castle scene. Perfect size for a tear tray now, and I love the little extra decor that we added to it. So fun. Okay, our next DIY, I'm gonna use one of these signs this is from the Shore Living line. I have this from last year. I don't know if they have these again this year, but some of my stores still have them in stock. There's a couple different ones. This one says, take me to the ocean, and it says sun at the top. But you could probably do this with a lot of different signs, but I'm gonna get a go with what they have on there and kind of use that as a reference. It's that cool like wood um, pattern, but I want mine to be like that beachy blue color. Kind of want to stain it. So I just mixed some light blue paint with water and just made a really light stain that I can then kind of wipe off a little bit so I can still see the writing through there so that I can go ahead and still get that message through there. But I want it as blue as I can. I did go over it with another coat of that blue stain just to try to make it a little bit more blue. I just don't want that paint coverage because again, I wanna be able to see the words so that we can paint those back on. Then when I have it as blue as I like it, we're just gonna go over it with a white paint pen. I'm just using a white Sharpie paint pen and look how cute that is. I think that's so pretty and beachy to use like white paint on a blue sign. It's one of my favorite things for a beachy sign. And we are going to write Take Me to the Ocean on there, which is a great song, by the way, too. And it's that great, like, script writing. It was pretty easy to see through and be able to replicate that with my paint pen. Now, I had taped off the top where it says sun. So we're going to remove that now. I realized that, you know, all of that staining on the front did kind of seep on the back. And it is a tear tray. And so, you know, you might be able to see that on the back. So I do want it to look a little bit more professional. So I have some more of that blue stain. So I might as well just stain the back while I'm at it. Now there's little shelves on each side of it. And I thought we could decorate it with some more of that fairy garden beach stuff. I thought we could hot glue a little pelican on one side and a little palm tree on the other, just leaving the sun word in wood. Isn't that cute and fun and very colorful? It's going to look great on this little beach themed tear tray. The next item is also Fairy Garden. It's one of these like little beach hut houses. It's really cute. I just want to touch up the paint a little bit and it was a little colorful for really what I wanted. So any of the colors that, you know, I didn't really want it to be so colorful. I'm just going over it with that tan color that like the little beach hut kind of already is. And then just kind of distress all over to kind of make it all blend in and make it look a little bit better. Sometimes they're just a little too busy. Some of the fairy garden buildings I have found and they have so many cute ones of these this year as well. So that was really easy. I just toned it down a little bit. I love the blue roof and the life ring and the little board can have a little bit of color there. So that looks cute. The next item is a Shore Living Jute Ball. Um, these are always fun to decorate with and really you don't have to do anything with it. Just kind of sit it on your tear tray like that. It's going to look beachy. It would also be great for a nautical tray. Okay, our next DIY, we're going to use one of these great ceramic shore living um, starfish. I was so happy to find these again this year. They're so pretty. Um, I love the texture on them. I don't necessarily like that color of blue. So I'm going to paint mine light blue with that light blue color we've been using. And look how pretty it looks in that color. I absolutely love it. I'm also going to distress it slightly on all the little bumps all over the starfish using a makeup sponge and a little ivory to kind of make it look very coastal farmhouse. 
Once we get it all painted and dried, I'm going to display mine on a little sign. I'm going to use one of those little burlap signs from the Dollar Tree that has the little plaque on the front. And I just a short cut, I can just pop that off and add uh, the little starfish to the front. Um, you could always cover any sign with a little piece of burlap, especially since Dollar Tree is carrying so many burlap pieces now. I think this piece actually has a typo on it. Um, so they can be a little bit hard to find, but I love them because they're nice and chunky and thick. Just remember there are a few little nails poking out. So have a hammer or something nearby so you don't poke yourself. And it's the perfect size for this cute little starfish on the front. I absolutely love the texture of it, um, but I really like it so much better in this color. Now it is ceramic, um, so I'm just going to kind of go around the edges with hot glue and then glue that down to the burlap sign. Super easy and uh, the perfect size for a tear tray. Okay, are you ready for another beach DIY? We're going to use some of these little wood summer flip-flops. My stores have just set summer, which is super fun. They've also set graduation, 4th of July, and Mother's Day. But some of my stores still don't have the shore living line out today. My biggest one, I went there today. I couldn't believe it. And I am staining it all over with that light blue paint stain we made by mixing paint with water so that you can still see the outline of the flip-flops. Now, I kind of wanted a stand for mine. I actually had one of these little chalkboards. Um, it's just kind of a slanted sign, and I thought it would make a good base for this. I think I got that at the Target dollar spot, actually. Now that we have our little flip-flop stained blue, it's time to paint and decorate them. Since I used this stain, I can still see all of the writing and everything through it well. So I'm just using a white paint pen and outlining kind of everything that was already on there. And these are going to turn out so cute and they're so easy to decorate. And they're a nice small size. I think they're going to fit well on the tear tray itself. Now for the little um, part of the flip-flop that goes over the foot, I thought it would look really cute and coastal to do that with some Dollar Tree rope. So I'm just going to put a bead of hot glue on right there where the top of the flip-flop is and glue down a piece of rope. Super easy. And I think this adds a fun texture to it instead of just painting all of it. We're going to cut down another piece right here and do the same thing on this one. And it really makes them look a little bit more high end. Going to do the same thing here on the other side of our flip flop. Just simply cutting down the rope and gluing it on. You could probably use any size. I think this is one of like the thinner ones. Might be cute with the white rope as well. And then once we get these all decorated, I'm going to display mine on that little chalkboard. So they're kind of like just put on display. Now for the little seashell, I thought a real seashell would be even better, right? So we're going to use some of those little seashells from the Dollar Tree. And just glue those over the little picture of the seashell. Time to attach it to this. I painted it to kind of look the color of sand. So it would blend in well and just going to hot glue that on. And I love how these turned out. I think this is going to be the final piece for this little tear tray. And then I thought I would use a couple of the Shore Living Dollar Tree sand dollars for a little filler. So there's our little sand castle. We're going to put that right on top of my three tier tray. It fits perfectly and nestle a little sand dollar next to it. Don't have a lot of room, so um, I, that's perfect for the little sand dollars on each side. And now we can move to the bottom. I'm going to use some my extra Dollar Tree sand to make mine extra beachy and extra fun. Um, you know, it's going to create a little bit of a mess, so keep that in mind if you want to use sand on yours. 
But, you know, I totally wanted that BC vibe. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just kind of spreading that out all over. And we can start decorating the second one. The little beachy Adirondack chairs, I think, look perfect nestled in the sand. Love how they turned out. And I love the addition of the shore living starfish. We can put our little beach hut over here. It's a great size, I think, for that tier. And it's totally going to go with that beach scene that we're creating. And our little blue whale will fit nicely, too. But he's a little short, so I'm going to use a little wood block underneath of him just to prop him up a little bit, just so everybody can see him. I have a little bit of room left here on the middle tray, so we're going to do that sand of my favorite beach bottle from the Shore Living line. And now we can start decorating the third tier. I have a little bit of that tan sand left, so I thought, why not? Let's spread it on this tier as well. We're going for the true beach vibe. And here's our little sandcastle fairy garden. So cute. And I love how I decorated that. And then next to that, we can do our little short living sign. I really kind of hope they bring these back again this year. I think they're really cute. But you might still have one left over from last year too. I think I do. The one with the whale on top. And then our little nautical jute ball will be really cute down here as well. All you have to do is just toss that on there. And our little starfish that we painted attached to burlap. I love it like that. I think it's so pretty. I like it better than the other ceramic one that's white, if you know what I mean. And then our little flip-flops over here will fit perfectly. I kind of have a little bit more room on the bottom because it's my largest tier. And here is a little sneak peek of how this one turned out. I think it was so cute. Everything here was from the Dollar Tree. Lots of the DIYs were super easy to put together. I think my favorite thing about this beach tier tray was that sandcastle on top. How cool is that? Probably my second favorite thing are those little Adirondack chairs with the starfish in them. And I think the whale I haven't seen at Dollar Tree in a while, but I have seen all of the fairy garden beach stuff. And the only other thing that I'm not sure if that you can still get is this like little sun sign. They had these um, for a few years, but I don't think that they brought them back this year, but I wish they would. They were a nice size for a tear tray, but they do have this little like beach house. I just got another one of those the other day. I love the fairy garden stuff that's about that size because it's perfect for tear trays. And you know, I'm going to be doing some new beach tear trays for sure. But the sand dollars and stuff look really cute displayed up against the sand castle as well. Hey guys, have you checked out my new website? It is craftybeach.net. I was so excited to launch this website. It's going to be like a one-stop shop for all of my DIYs. Let me give you a little tour. When you go there, um, the most recent video will be on the top. And I have it where you can click on it. You can go down, see all the photos that you can pin on Pinterest of all the DIYs I made in that video. If you go down, you can find the video with the tutorial. I even have other things on here. I have them like browsed by season, all DIYs. You can find my social media. You can find my Amazon shop for all of my crafting recommendations. And I even have a link to my Etsy shop for my cute little crafting meme printables and artwork. So, Remember, it's craftybeach.net. I'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to get this website off and running. Okay, are you guys ready for a third beach tear tray? I have lots of crafting inspiration for you today. This one, I tried to make it a simple tear tray by using items that you could find at the dollar stores. And it was really fun and whimsical and really easy to put together. So I think you're going to enjoy this one as well. Um, I want to use some sand for mine, so I'm going to use some Dollar Tree sand. I ended up needing all two bags of this because I'm going to cover all three tiers of my tear tray with sand because I want this to look beachy, right? 
This is my three-tiered galvanized metal tear tray from Target. Um, they used to have these in the kitchen section. I don't think they do anymore because um, I picked up my last one on clearance there. And so I do like a half a bag on the very top tier and we can start decorating that one. That's about how deep of the sand I went. Not too deep, but just kind of enough to cover the bottom. Now, the first item we're going to use for the tear tray is from the Target Dollar Spot. This was $5 and with their fairy garden stuff. And it's so cute. The one thing I'm going to use is the little lifeguard chair for this one. And I think this is perfect for a beach tear tray. There's not going to be a lot of DIYs for this beach tear tray because a lot of these items are super cute as is they had so many fun beach items for a tear tray you know smaller stuff this year at the dollar stores now i wanted somebody to sit in the little chair of uh, the lifeguard chair and so i'm gonna use one of these little fairy garden birds i thought it would be funny if i like kind of set him in there i don't like to usually leave an empty chair if i can help it and so i'm just gonna kind of sit him in there kind of like that not going to attach it or anything. Just sit him in there. That way you can reuse that chair later on. This was also from the fairy garden section at the dollar spot at Target. $5. I know, but look at how adorable it is. It's absolutely perfect. I don't have to do anything to it. And it couldn't be any beachier. All I have to do is take off this sticky tag. The color is perfect. It's got so much detail. It's got like the little fence around it. It's got surfboards. It's got windows. I love it. That's why a lot of this tear tray is going to be really quick today because I found just so many beautiful uh, beachy items. And this one is probably my favorite. It's nice and tall though. So it's definitely going to have to go on the top. Otherwise, it's not going to fit. So we're going to sit it here right next to our little lifeguard chair. So those are both items from the Target Dollar Spot. The little bird, though, there was from Dollar Tree, too. Now, this was from Dollar Tree from their fairy garden section. And it's a little rock with a little seahorse on the front of it. It's so cute. It's from the beach line from Fairy Garden. And he is perfect as is. I do want you to be able to see them though, and there are metal sides on the tray, so I thought I would boost it up a little bit with one of these little wood stems from the Dollar Tree to make sure that you're going to be able to see it. So my top tier is not real big, really about four items is going to fill it up. So there, that kind of fills in my third side. Um, I kind of want this to be a tier tray that you can see from all directions. So we're going to decorate all, every side of all three tiers. Now, I found this adorable little beach gnome for $4.50 at Dollar General. It says it's 5 o'clock, and it looks like a little gnome with sunglasses, sandals. He's got like a little lay, a drink in his hand. I thought he looked beachy, and I thought he looked really fun for summer. And he's tall, too. So we're going to stand him up on the other side of my little lifeguard tower. And I think that's going to be enough for the top. So we can move on to the second tier. I told you this was going to be a quick, easy beach tier tray. And I've been dying to put this one together. I had to wait until I had um, some open room, though, in my decor for another tier tray. Now, this is, it says from the forest line. I don't know. I guess they have forest line. But it looks beachy to me. Of the fairy garden section at Dollar Tree. But as you can see... Mine is broken. The little flag on the top is broken off, but I thought no big deal. We could just make a new little flag. I'm just going to use some of the starfish shore living ribbon from the Dollar Tree and kind of make our own little flag, kind of glue it to itself. So it will like have decorations on both sides. And then I'm going to have to cut it down to make it small enough to fit in that little flag holder. But Sometimes it's worth buying items broken at the Dollar Tree if that's the only time you're going to find it. But I thought this little sand castle was so cute. It's painted so nicely. And I just cut like a little V pennant. And I'm just going to put it in there with a little hot glue. Because I definitely needed a flag at the top of it, right? But look how nicely this one's painted. This little sand castle. And I think it's going to look so cute on our little beach themed tear tray. So that's going to be our first item down here on our second tier. 
And I love using the sand on the tear trays. Totally makes it BT, right? Now, this little guy is from the Target Dollar Spot. A little seagull plush. He's so cute. Check it out. Target Dollar Spot right now, $3. They had two different versions of this little guy. They're both really cute. I mean, look at all of the details on this. For $3, I had to have a little seagull for my beach-themed tear tray. And I just love him. I wanted to do a little bit of the beachy blues on this. And so he is definitely going to fit in well, as did that little lifeguard um, house earlier from Target Dollar Spot. So we're going to kind of sit him here. He's the perfect height, I think, to go here on the second tier. And this is probably, this is a big tear tray, but I put it together so quickly, I was impressed. Now, this is another fairy garden item from Dollar Tree. This is from, um, couldn't read it there. Was it the beach line or the forest line? It doesn't really matter. They kind of mix them all together at the stores. But I noticed that it had a little pennant banner on the front, but it wasn't really painted. So I'm just going to use a blue Sharpie and kind of um, color that in just to give it a little bit more color. I don't like these to be too colorful, but I found it looked a little washed out, right, with um, the things all being ivory. And then the little window here at the top, I'm going to do the same thing with a red Sharpie just to give it a little bit more color. But it's already got the surfboard and the little life buoy on the front that are painted. I think those are fine. And it's just a little, another little lifeguard house or hut for our tear tray. And it's going to fit nicely down here next to our little seagull. I always love picking up any of these little beachy buildings about this size from the Target Dollar Spot. I think they're a great value. Now, this cute little beach buoy I picked up at Dollar General. And look at that. They're cheaper than Dollar Tree. A dollar. So this was their beach stuff they have this year. And I love the color of this. It's like my favorite color. All I have to do is take the tag off and it is ready to go. A lot of times when I do tear trays, I have to make um, DIY like at least half the stuff. But today we're doing pretty good here. And <laughs> the stores are really bringing it with the beach items. Very pleased. So I'm going to sit that one right here next to that little house and kind of uh, show you down in there how it looks has a little starfish on the front and says beach. Now, this little next item is a starfish tray that I got the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. And it's kind of like a rough white ceramic, but I'm going to kind of leave it that way. I kind of wanted it to be a white starfish, so I'm not going to paint it or anything, but I'm going to kind of stand it up against the pole here in the middle. It'll be a cute little piece kind of peeking out from behind. Our next item, which is this. So this is from the Fairy Garden Beach Line at Dollar Tree 2. And it's another rock, but this one's got a little like mint green or blue octopus on top. And how adorable is he? I think he's perfect and he definitely needs to be a part of this beach tear tray. And he's not real tall, so we can sit him in front of that starfish with the starfish peeking out behind him. And I think that's nice. The, the second tier is all done and we can move on to the bottom. Now, normally I do like a pennant banner or something around the sides of this one. But since I'm using the sand today, I kind of think that was enough of a little extra beachy decoration. So we're going to kind of leave it as is with the galvanized metal on the sides. No pennant banners. If you're wanting one for yours, you feel free because I always think they look really cute on there. But the bottom's big, so it took a whole bag of that Dollar Tree sand. And this is another one of the little fairy garden forest, it says. Um, like little beach huts. It's a little different than the first one. It's got like a different window, surfboard. It's got a seashell in front of it, but I love the beachy blue. It's got like a metal roof on it. And I thought that would be really cute for a tear tree as well. So we're going to put that down here in the bottom in our sand pit and keep moving along. This is one of the little um, beach buoy wind chimes from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. And whenever I saw these, I tried to pick them up because I love them. I've made a wind chime out of them. They're so cute, but I thought it'd be perfect size for a beach tear tray for a little buoy decoration. 
And the painting on there is just perfect. I love them. This is also from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. It is one of their turquoise starfish. You could use any color. My favorite ones were these blue ones, the light blue ones, and like the white ones. But if you couldn't find the color that you wanted, you could always paint these. They're super easy to paint because they're just made out of wood. Mine doesn't really need a hanger though, so I just snipped that off. The twine on the top is fine though, but I'm going to stand that up against the pole in the back of my tear tray as well. And I think that looks really cute. I like all the different colors of blue that we're using too. The next sign is from the Dollar Tree. It says relax. It's not short living or anything like that. It's from the regular aisle at Dollar Tree. It's a little bit smaller than the signs like this from the short living line at Dollar Tree. It's got like light gray for the E and A, like little bump out letters. But I thought the word relax would be perfect for a little beach sign for a tear tray. So I kind of want to make the letters a beachy blue. So I'm just going to use a makeup sponge and some cloudless um, apple barrel paint and just just kind of paint those two letters, leaving the R, L and X still white. Nice soft blue. And then I thought we would use these new little chipboard decor from Dollar Tree to give a little bit more beachy um, decor to this little relax sign. So I thought maybe one of these little seahorses would look cute maybe on the a or the x over here i love these they're so cute and they're already kind of painted too so i'm going to attach mine with a little hot glue here to the bottom of my x i still want you to be able to kind of read it but i wanted to give it a little beachy decoration but then i wasn't real happy with the purple on the bottom of the tail because i really am not using any of that color today so I'm going to use that same blue color that we used on the E and the A, the cloudless, and just kind of paint his tail that color. And then I wanted to use one more. So I thought maybe one of these little blue dolphins would be cute on the R, kind of wrapping around the top. They're very lightweight, so you can just kind of glue them on. And I like the little ocean um, print on it, but I wanted to lighten it up a little bit. So I just distressed that lightly with that same color just to make it coordinate with the E and the A on the sign. And I think this is perfect. I like that it's a little bit smaller than the Shore Living um, sign, so it is going to fit a little bit better on my tray. The next find is from Goodwill. I found this cute little blue sailboat. It's kind of dirty and <laughs> it was only like 50 cents, but I thought it would be a really cute decor for like a beach themed tear tray. So. It's just a matter of cleaning this one up a little bit, getting the tag here off of the sail. And it was kind of covered in dirt as well, but the blue paint on there was intact, so I don't really need to paint it or anything. Originally, I was going to paint it, but once I cleaned it up, it looked pretty good. And then I thought we could just kind of decorate the sail with one of those little chipboard pieces from the Dollar Tree as well. This time I'm opting for the Little Mermaid here. The colors are perfect to go with that sail. I thought of making, about making her sit on the like boat, but then I decided I would just decorate the sail with her just to give a little beachy coastal touch. And I just attached that to the little boat with hot glue. Super cute, super easy. And I think that's gonna look really good down here on the bottom tier of this tear tray. The height is perfect. Another shade of blue, maybe. And we've almost got this finished. This item I found also at Target. It is not, it wasn't like necessarily fairy, fairy garden. It says wooden house. It's with their like beach and lake stuff and it's only $3. It is the Surf Shack. It's another shade of blue. The colors are really nice. The wood is really nice on it. Very high quality for $3. I'm loving these dollar spot items. And that is going to finish off, I think, the bottom tier here of our little beach themed tear tray. And I will give you a little tour here. And sometimes you want kind of an easy tear tray. I think all of this was really easy to put together using the Shore Living Beach items. You know, I did have a few items on this tear tray from the Target Dollar Spot, which I don't know if they're bringing back any beach stuff this summer, but I sure hope so because they have really cute stuff, right? 
and um, just little customizations on things. You know, I wish they brought those buoy bells back this year with the Shore Living line. I haven't seen them. Have you seen them this year? I really like that bird. It's one of my favorites. I actually saved him. And I really love the lifeguard tower. So I saved that too. So hopefully um, Target Dollar Spot will bring it this year. Okay, you've made it all the way to the final reveal of all three of our beach tier trays today. Hopefully you got lots of tier tray inspiration. Um, be sure to comment your favorite tier tray in the description below. Number one, number two, or number three. Okay, enjoy the final reveal. are too big can I get some comfort please I guess I should have been honest it breaks in my heart it's weighing me down baby I'm like a river that's overflowed the sooner you know it the less do we hurt let me speak the truth Too late, but I can see past the rain. Won't you lay it on me? Turn the page and burn it. Let's make up a big bonfire on the beach with the stars as our lighters and throw our problems in the much for making it all the way to the end of today's video. I also want to give a huge thank you and shout out to all of my Crafty Beach Fun members for supporting my YouTube channel. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R., Tracy Knight, Nancy Warner, Julie Miller, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C., and Lindsay. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. If you would like to be a Crafty Beach Bum member, all you have to do is hit the join button under today's video. It's $4.99 a month. You're going to get early ad-free access to my videos. And it's a quick, easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. Okay, do you want some more crafting DIYs? Well, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Happy crafting! <laughs>